Topic, oxidation. <laughs> Why do papers turn yellow? <laughs> they really do. You don't believe me? <laughs> All right. Then why don't you spray some oxygen on the papers? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was correct. Hmm. Do you know why this happens? Hmm. This happens mainly because of oxidation. Oxidation is a chemical process in which a substance combines with oxygen. Hmm. Oh. <sighs> now, paper is primarily made up of wood. Wood is made up of cellulose and lignin. Hmm. Now, these two components oh. which are present in paper are susceptible <laughs> to oxidation. That is, hmm. when they are exposed to air, they are likely to combine with oxygen, causing the color of paper to change from white to yellow. Hmm. Hmm. Ah! But did you know that newspapers turn yellow relatively quickly as compared to books? This is because there is more lignin in newspapers than in papers huh? made for books. Lignin is more susceptible to oxidation as compared to cellulose. Hence, newspapers turn yellow faster than papers of books. <laughs> Topic, oxidation. Huh? Why do copper vessels turn green? Mm. <laughs> wow. What a beautiful <laughs> copper statue. <laughs> Have you made it? Good job. <laughs> but why did you use copper to make the statue? Huh? It will turn green after a oh. while. Mm. No, no. It will not happen immediately. It will take some time. Hmm. <laughs> huh? Huh? Look, I told you mm. earlier. Do you know why this happened? Mm. This happened because of oxidation. Mm. Do you know what ah. oxidation is? Mm. It is a process in which a substance gains oxygen. Oh. When the copper statue was exposed to moisture and air for a long period of time, it started to get oxidized. In the oxidation process, oh. Oh. its color started changing to blackish brown and then eventually into green. Huh? The green layer of color appeared because of a number of chemical reactions that took place when exposed to moisture and air. This green layer formed is called patina. Huh? No, no, don't worry. Patina does not damage the statue. Patina is just a layer on top of the metal. It protects the copper beneath from further oxidation, ah. thus keeping the properties of copper intact. Topic. Cleansing ability of soap. Why is soap ineffective in hard water? Mm. Wow, what a beautiful painting. <laughs> but look at your clothes. Oh. They have become so dirty. Mm. Why don't you wash them? <laughs> no, no, don't use that water along with soap. <laughs> Please listen. Fine, then <laughs> bear the consequences. <laughs> See, you are not able to clean them. Hmm. Do you know why? Hmm. This is because you used hard water to clean your clothes. Do you know what hard water is? Hmm. Hard water is the water which contains high amounts of minerals, such as calcium and magnesium, in the form of ions. Huh? So, are these ions of the hard water responsible for soap to be ineffective? Hmm. Bingo, oh. you are right. Hooray! Now, to understand what actually happened, let us recall the activity. Initially, you drenched your clothes in hard water and then you applied some soap. Oh. When we apply soap, it reacts with the calcium and magnesium ions of hard water to form insoluble precipitate called scum. Huh? Scum sticks to the clothes, huh? restricting the cleansing ability of the soap. Mm. <laughs> Topic, Archimedes principle. <laughs> Why do we weigh less in water? <laughs> hey, looks like you have gained a lot of weight. Huh? Come on, let us <laughs> check your weight. You weigh 132 pounds. Hmm. All right, don't get stressed. Hmm. Check your weight in water. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Look, it is much lesser. Do you know why you weighed less in water? The answer to this is based on Archimedes' principle. Ah. Not that principle. Oh. Archimedes' principle is a fundamental truth which states that an object fully or partly immersed in a fluid experiences an upward force called buoyant force, which is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by it. It went over your head, right? No worries. Let me explain. Gravity always pulls us downwards. Hence, the weight of our body always acts downwards, whether we are on ground or in water. However, according to Archimedes' principle, when we are in water, we experience an upward force. That is, buoyant force which is equal to the weight of water displaced by us. This upward force cancels a portion of our weight, causing us to weigh less in water. <laughs> Topic, Newton's third law of motion. Why does a swimmer push the water backward? Oh no, there's a hole in the boat. Now, how will you reach the shore? Don't worry, do as I say. Jump in the water and push the water backward with your hands. This will help you to move forward towards the shore. No, you are not pushing the water backward. See, you are moving forward towards the shore. Do you know why you were able to move forward by pushing the water backward? Mm. To understand this, you need to learn about Newton's third law of motion. Hooray! Oh. Newton's third law of motion states that, for every action, there is an uh. equal and opposite reaction. <laughs> nah, not that action. Wait, let me explain. When we swim, we apply force and push the water backward with the help of our hands. This is action. In response to this action, the water pushes us forward with an equal force. This is reaction. Thus, in order to move forward and swim, the swimmer pushes the water backward. <laughs> Topic, convex mirror. Why is a <laughs> convex mirror used as a rear view mirror? Wow, what an amazing car. <laughs> but your rear view mirror is missing. Huh? <laughs> no, don't use a mm. concave mirror. Ah. It will usually show you magnified images. Oh. <laughs> Why don't you listen to me? Mm -hmm. Huh? See, I was correct. Mm. Now put the convex mirror and see yeah. the result. Mm. Oh. Look, the image is much smaller, <laughs> right? Mm. Do you know what the difference between the two mirrors was? Mm. If we use a concave mirror for our car, we will not be able to see the vehicles behind us properly. This is because the concave mirror will magnify the object and we will see a very enlarged image. Thus, we require a mirror which gives us a wider view of the vehicles behind us. In this case, a convex mirror proves to be the right choice. This is because a convex mirror forms a highly diminished image, thus making the traffic look much smaller. As a result, we can see a large number of vehicles in a very small mirror. Topic, heat. Why do woolen clothes keep us warm? The night is quite cold and you have worn cotton clothes. <laughs> oh. Why don't you wear some woolen clothes? They will keep you warm. Please listen to me. Look, you're shivering. At least now wear some woolen clothes. Hmm. Huh? Huh? Ha <laughs> ha
<laughs> now you are feeling warm, right? Do you know why? Wait, I will tell you. Both wool and cotton are bad conductors of heat, as in, they do not conduct or transmit heat to the surrounding. Then why do we feel warm only in woolen clothes? This is because, in woolen clothes, there are many more tiny spaces as compared to that in cotton ah. clothes. Due to these extra tiny spaces, woolen clothes trap more air as compared to cotton clothes. <laughs> now, since air is a bad conductor oh. of heat, woolen clothes containing more air do not allow much of our body heat to escape into the atmosphere, thus keeping us warm. <laughs> Topic: Atmospheric Refraction <laughs> Why do stars seem higher than they actually are? Mm. <laughs> hey, that is not the actual position of the star. Mm. <laughs> Please listen. Ah. Fine, then bear the consequences. Mm. <laughs> oh! See, I told you. Mm. Do you know why this happens? Mm. Huh? Oh. Ah. This happens because of atmospheric refraction. Atmospheric refraction is the refraction or bending of light caused by the Earth's atmosphere. Oh. It went over your head, right? Mm. No worries. Let me explain it to you in detail. <laughs> <laughs> In the Earth's atmosphere, the air closer to the Earth's surface is denser due to gravity. Oh. But as we move higher, the air density goes on decreasing. This forms different media of air. The layer of air closer to the Earth's surface forms the denser medium, while the layer of air higher up in the sky forms the rarer medium. Now, when the light of a star enters our atmosphere and passes from one medium to another, atmospheric refraction takes place and the light bends. When this light reaches our eyes, our eyes trace it backward as a straight line. Oh. Due to this, the light appears to come from a higher point. Hence, the star seems to be higher than it actually is. <laughs> Topic: Gravitational force. Ah. <laughs> Why do you weigh less on the moon? Mm. Huh? Ah. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? It is not possible. You cannot fly on Earth. Please listen. Look, I had warned you. Now, why don't you try the same activity on the moon? There, you will weigh much less and thus you can fly short distances. <laughs> huh? See, I was correct. Do you know why you weigh less on the moon? Mm. To understand this, we need to first learn about weight. Mm? No, not those <laughs> weights. Oh. Weight is the force with which an object is pulled towards the center of the Earth or any other celestial body. This force is called the gravitational force. Huh? Greater the gravitational force exerted by the celestial body, oh. more will be the weight of an object present on it. So, does huh? this mean that the moon exerts less gravitational force than the Earth? Oh. Bingo. <laughs> you are right. But do you know why? Mm. This is because gravitational force is directly proportional to the mass of an object. <laughs> greater the mass, greater will be the gravitational force exerted by it and thus, more will be our weight. <laughs> As the moon has lesser oh. mass than the Earth, it has a weaker huh? gravitational pull and hence, Hooray! we weigh less on the moon. <laughs> Topic: Pressure. <laughs> huh? Why is it difficult to oh. cut with a blunt knife? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like you are hungry. Huh? Why mm. didn't you have an apple? Oh. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> No, don't use the blunt knife. Use the sharp knife. Hmm. Mm. 
Looks like you want to go ahead with the blunt knife only. Hmm. See? Huh? You are oh. finding it difficult to cut the apple now. Hmm. Now, try cutting with the sharp knife. <laughs> Hooray! Look, oh. the apple gets cut very <laughs> easily. Confused, right? Hmm. Let me explain. <laughs> All this happens due to a concept called pressure. What is pressure? Mm. It is the force applied per unit area. Huh? That means the pressure will be directly proportional to force and inversely proportional to area. Huh? Now, we applied the same amount of force on both the knives. Then, huh? why was the result different? Mm. This is because the area on which oh. the force acted was different. Oh. In the case of a blunt knife, the cutting edge is thicker. That means the area is larger. As a result, the force of our hand falls over a larger area of the knife, producing less pressure. Hence, it is difficult to cut with a blunt knife. <laughs> hmm. <laughs>